So Namaste, Vanakam, Swagatam, Bonjour, Bonjour, No, Bonasera, Bonanote, Huya Mure, Vareda, Kiora, Salamat Pagi, Ayubovan, Ayushman Baba, welcome each and every one of you to today's uh, session, our penultimate uh, session uh, today of the Salutogenesis and Holistic Health uh, webinar series. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to express, as usual, our gratitude to the father of salutogenesis, the one and only Professor Aaron Antonovsky. And I would like to express our gratitude to him on this occasion. As you know, we are celebrating his centenary year and this uh, centenarial year we are celebrating as a year of salutogenesis at SBB. And this event is uh, part of uh, this whole grand plan of the year long celebration. Let's begin by a prayer before we go into the actual event today. Uh... Sahana Babatu Sahana Bunaktu Sahavir Yam Kalva Bahai Tejas Bina Badi Tamas Tu Mavid Bisha Bahai Om Shanti 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 Om Shri Gurbyo Namaha Hari Om So today, we have uh, our young brigade from the ISCM presenting on music therapy and yoga therapy for us. We will first have a session by Ms. Janita Karen, who is the assistant professor, School of Music Therapy. And that will be followed by a session on yoga therapy by uh, Sri Dayanidhi and Dr. Balaji, assistant professors in the School of Yoga Therapy. The uh, first presentation today is by Ms. Janita Karen Rajkumari, who is currently Assistant Professor, School of Music Therapy, ISCM of SVB. She has graduated with a bachelor's degree in audiology and speech language pathology and completed her master's in medical music therapy from SVB. So she is one of our uh, alumni who is uh, now serving the cause of music therapy through ISCM. She is a member of the Publications Commission of the World Federation of Music Therapy. And her major area of speciality is with children with special needs. She's authored a book chapter focusing on music therapy for children with special needs in the Indian scenario. She has more than three years of clinical experience in music therapy with exposure to clinical departments such as obstetrics, gynecology, pediatrics, neurosurgery, dermatology, etc. She is currently a PhD scholar and her work is looking at the interdisciplinary research in children with autism spectrum disorders. So with this brief introduction to my dear Janita, handing over the screen to her and wishing her all the best for her presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, am, am I audible? Perfectly. Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful uh, introduction you gave me. And uh, I really want to thank for this opportunity of presenting in a forum where such eminent speakers have been presenting. It's really an honor for me as a very new professional uh, in the profession now. So thank you, sir. I will share my screen now. <clears throat> Is it okay, sir? Perfect. Okay. My warm greetings to everyone who is uh, here online today and those who are watching the recording as well. And before I start uh, my talk today, I would like to say that this presentation is actually the outcome of my attempt to understand 
how music therapy is a salutogenic orientation in the perspective of a music therapist who is working in a hospital field as well as in the community areas. So as we all know, at this point of time in the webinar, salutogenesis uh, refers to the salutogenic model of health. And the heart of the salutogenic model of health is a sense of coherence. So this model say, says that life experiences of a person is very important in shaping the person's sense of coherence. And sense of coherence is actually an orientation towards life where a person is feeling that their life is comprehensible, manageable, as well as meaningful to themselves. And salutogenesis actually in an other perspective, in the perspective of health promotion, research and practice is, uh, is referred to as a salutogenic orientation. So then I, when I saw this uh, term salutogenic orientation and the salutogenic model of health, I tried to find out the difference between the both. And this is what I have arrived with. So as I already told, the heart of the salutogenic model of health is a sense of coherence. In, in, the, in that context, they talk about the global orientation. So this global orientation is actually relevant for all human beings and is basically the ability of humans to use the resources which are available to cope up with the stresses that they face in life. But when it comes to the health promotion aspect, uh, as I've already mentioned that uh, salutogenesis is referred to as a salutogenic orientation, which is actually from a professional's point of view, where it is the interest of the professionals, that is the healthcare professionals, to study as well as promote the origins of health and rather than the origins of the disease. So here I would like to bring in music and music therapy. In my understanding, I feel that music itself is more relevant to the global orientation because as music therapists we believe that every human being has the innate capacity and the ability to make music as well as appreciate music so with regards to the global orientation music can be used by all human beings as one of the resources that they use in everyday life to cope up with the stressors that they face and when it comes to music therapy i feel that it is in a more professional thing or a salutogenic orientation where trained professionals use music therapy to promote the origins of health rather than the origins of disease. So as we have entered into the context of music and music therapy, I would like to introduce to you this framework which was uh, made by Raymond McDonald in the year 2012 to show that in a pictorial representation, how music can be used in different ways to have an effect on health and well-being of various individuals. So according to him, these are the four aspects in which music can be used. Music education, music therapy, community music, as well as everyday uses of music. Music education is actually when an individual is involved in learning music itself. It, it, the primary aim of music, music education it is actually not anything therapeutic or related to health and well-being, but there are a lot of secondary benefits that may arise during the course of music education, which will enhance the health and well-being of the person. When it comes to everyday uses of music, this is more in relevance to the global orientation where music can be used as a tool, as a simple resource to cope up with the daily stresses of life. And community music, on the other hand, is actually uh, created by individuals who come together and most particularly individuals who share similar demographic details. So when they come together and when they make music, that is actually called as community music and it really contributes to the health and well-being of all the individuals within the community. And this concept of community music has now led to the uh, con context of community music therapy, where trained professionals take the various music uh, therapy methods into the community for their health and well-being. Last but not the least, and the core concept of today's talk, music therapy, uh, by definition, is uh, defined as the professional use of music and all its elements to for the betterment of an individual or a group's life, uh, quality of life, and the other aspects of their health and well-being. And it is also important that uh, in the definition they have mentioned that it is provided for the people who seek to optimize. It is that that's what the definition says. It is not forced on anyone. It is for the people who seek to music therapy and want to improve their quality of life and want to maintain and have a better health and well-being. So this is what the definition of music therapy says. And music therapy is actually 
an intervention process. It does not happen in one day. Any client who comes to music therapy, they should be try our best to make them not believe that they listen to music and then they are okay. It is actually an intervention process. And this process of music therapy actually has four stages, which is assessment, treatment, evaluation, and termination. The assessment process actually starts when a client or a patient is referred for music therapy by a physician or other healthcare professionals. And when they come to us, we music therapists do a detailed assessment process. And this can be done in three ways, actually. First, we go through the medical records of the client to know the history. And we also have uh, detailed discussions and focused discussions with the doctors who are attending and also the health, other healthcare professionals like speech pathologists, psychologists who might work with the clients. The second way of assessment is we have direct interviews with the clients and also the caretakers to get more of personal data and what they are feeling at that point of time. And it comes to the third stage <coughs> inside the assessment. It is a very important uh, stage because this is music therapy and we try to collect the musical profile of the clients. So the musical profile encompasses of details like what the client likes and dislikes in music, what the client is exposed to in regular life. So the music therapy uh, treatment in, is going to involve a lot of musical experiences. So based on this information we gather during the musical profile assessment, we try to tailor make the experiences for the clients. And with all the other medical and emotional details that we have gained through the detailed assessment, we fix certain goals and objectives towards which the therapy process will happen. The next stage after the assessment is the treatment phase where Music therapists use music and all his elements in various but very specific ways to uh, go through the intervention process. And the next is the evaluation, which I would say is a continuous process because evaluation cannot happen on one day. It happens throughout the course of the music therapy process because we continuously have to monitor how the client is responding to the music therapy, how much progress is happening. Is there any regress that is happening? And if, if there is regress, we need to change uh, the music, the approach that we are following. So constant evaluation is actually happening throughout the music therapy process. And the final stage is the termination, which is a very important stage because we need to give that sense of closure for all our, for all our clients. And uh, practically speaking, in working in the hospital setup, it, it is actually difficult to find time for termination because the discharge and the admissions of the clients is actually not, not in the control of music therapists. But as much as possible, we try to be in contact and you know constantly follow up with the doctors and the nurses who are there in the ward so that we know when they are going to get discharged. So this termination process can happen smoothly. I would like to go in deep uh, more on the treatment stage. So as I told, uh, the treatment stage is where <coughs> The music therapist will use music in very different but very specific ways. And these specific ways can be classified as the methods of music therapy. So broadly, there are four methods of music therapy, which are receptive, recreative, compositional, and improvisational. When it comes to receptive, the clients are involved in various listening uh, you know, they listen to a lot of musical pieces or songs, which can be both live or pre-recorded, but it's not just listening. They have to respond to the listening experience in certain ways. They can draw if they are interested in art, they can talk about it, they can write about it, they can use other media like, or dance forms, various art forms. So this is receptive music. When it comes to recreative music, there is not much of listening, but making music, but making music uh, particularly which are pre-composed and very familiar or whatever the client likes. And this recreation can also be taken in a different angle to say that sometimes, uh, most times the clients who are admitted in hospitals really miss their home, their regular routine and everything. So during the music uh, musical profile assessment process, if we get to know that this particular client has a particular song which he or she sings every day 
while doing puja at home. So we try to bring in that song to the hospital setting. We sing it along with the client and recreate their personal experience in the hospital. And this will really contribute to improving their quality of life during the stay, uh, during their stay in the hospital. And when it comes to compositional, uh, it, it involves the clients talking about their feelings and then with the help of the music therapist, putting it in the form of a song and making a song out of it. And the music therapist is there to facilitate that uh, focused kind of conversations where the feelings are projected out and they make it into a song. And usually more than the song writing process, the clients enjoy uh, singing the uh, output song because they they feel like they have achieved something because they have written a song. It is not something simple to write and compose a song. So they really like the output most of the times. And the last method of music therapy is the improvisational music therapy where clients are given the space to a non-judgmental space where they can make music. They can use a lot of instruments, they can use their voice, they can scream, they can make sounds, they can sing, they can dance, they can move. So all these uh, different musical activities can be done within the therapy setup. And we give them the assurance that they will not be judged and it's not necessary that they need to be trained in music to make music. So these are broadly the four methods of music therapy techniques that we use in the hospital settings as well as the community settings. Coming to the objectives, uh, the music therapy process, of course, uh, they have musical experiences which are happening throughout the process. But when it comes to the objectives or the outcomes of these musical experiences, they are always non-musical in nature. So this is like a formula in music therapy. Music therapy process equals musical experiences plus non-musical objectives. So for example, we can give an instrument to the client and they are just playing around with it, which is a musical experience. But the outcome can be improved fine motor skills. And uh, they can, you can uh, sing a song with your client where they are just enjoying and just singing their hearts out. But the objective or the outcome can be the improvement in the lung capacity because singing helps in improvement of the lung capacity. So like this music therapy process has musical experiences which are done, very focused, but focused on very, very much non-musical objectives. So all this is fine. I've talked about music therapy has a salutogenic orientation and how the music therapy process actually happens. But then I was trying to find out how do I actually justify to say that yes, music therapy is a salutogenic approach. So that is when I came across this very interesting uh, pictorial representation, which is a copyrighted image by Lindstrom and Erickson. So this image represents that Salatogenesis is more than the measurement of sense of coherence. There are these other assets of health and well-being that a person must possess to have a good health and well-being. And these are, uh, these are actually the origins of good health. So uh, instead of me saying that, okay, music therapy is going to help in action competence, music therapy is going to help in hardiness, connectedness, empowerment, I would like to have an interactive session with you where I will be showing you some videos. And after each video, I'll be displaying this image uh, on the screen. So at that point of time, you can tell me in which all assets of health and well being can music therapy be used to nurture the assets of health in that particular population. So the videos that I'll be playing will be of various populations. Is that okay? I'll take that as a yes, I got <laughs> Okay, sir. So I'll play the first video. Uh, to give a quick background of the first video, it is a very small snippet of a community outreach program that we had done with the transgender community. So here is the video.
so here is the image again you can tell me like or guess or put it in the chat or switch on your mics and tell me in which all assets of health and well being can music therapy be used in this particular population of transgenders i'm checking the chat box yes self transcendence thank you anand sir yes meena ma'am also self transcendence yes social intelligence coping yes ma'am definitely coping yes <laughs> humor thriving flourishing quality of life yes ma'am yes post from learn resources empowerment yes belonging yes self efficacy connectedness yes yes flow being involved in doing whatever they want so uh, before i show what i have uh, highlighted uh, for this particular uh, population it is a very subjective perspective that each person will have because all these are assets of health and well being as i said and for each individual person health and well being can mean different things so uh, oops yeah this is what i had uh, highlighted in my experiences connectedness because they were able to connect with me cultural capital uh, importantly why because cultural capital is the ability to know what they do in their culture and being able to exhibit it in in a place or in a public circle and quality of life as you told flow flow is being really engrossed in what they are doing and point of time and as you could see they were really enjoying and they were in the moment they were not thinking of any of their problems and they had a lot of problems because during these sessions i had the fortunate experience of connect uh, of talking with them and most of, and a lot of people came and opened up about their issues what they had felt like one person just the previous day had gotten hit on the road by just random people using tube lights so, and uh, most of them go for sex work and they get very much ill treated by drunk people at night they get scared and uh, they had a lot of problems and these sessions really from what i what i saw it gave them learned hopefulness it gave them gratitude towards what they were having it could improve the quality of life uh, it was an idea for them that they can use music and they are you know moving to music as a coping mechanism for their uh, for their issues and stresses that they feel in life and also will to meaning very importantly because uh, these people might feel that what is the meaning of my life i don't have anything to do my family doesn't support me and these as part of these sessions i think we'll be able to help them big time in gaining that will to meaning in their life so we can go on talk about it i'll want to show the other videos also so we'll move on to the next video Ever boy, ever I, ever boy, ever I.
So here is the image again. You know the drill. Yes. Belonging and optimism. Yes. Connectedness. Yes. Striving. Inner strength. <coughs> Humor. Post trauma. Coping. Self transcending. Yes. So, uh, we might actually think that all these assets of health and well-being that we are talking about is uh, that a person must feel. And it can be misconceived that the person is in a coma. So how can he feel all this? And which is definitely not true because even though he is in the coma, he has feeling. He's still a human being who is alive. He is able to uh, hear what is happening around him. And he was very much having feelings. And we could really see that he was having uh, connection feelings with music because he used to react so much. He used to turn his head. He used to try open his eyes. And for me, this uh, particular patient was very special because this was the first uh, patient care that I did as a student here in SBV, and it was it it, it was I felt very bad when the patient actually passed away after a few a uh, few weeks. So. Uh, These are the ones, uh, the assets of health and well-being that I have highlighted. Uh, hardiness, which is the ability to cope up with the changes that is happening in life. Because for him personally, I would say this is a very big change because for a person who is very young and uh, he just had a baby and baby was six months old, for a person who was with a happy family, going into a coma and not being able to move and you know going through so much of physical as well as mental trauma, was very difficult and uh, yes inner strength as it all learned hopefulness gratitude quality of life all this is what i feel would have uh, been enhanced using the music therapy sessions so moving on to the next video I actually wanted to show this video specifically, even though I have showed it in uh, previous presentations. Why? Because we might think that all the assets of health and well-being and the sense of coherence and the salutogenic orientation is okay for only normally functioning, typically normally functioning individuals. 
schools. But I don't agree to that. Even with children with autism spectrum disorder, they can also be looked at in the teletogenic orientation and as teletogenic model of health. And they very much fit into the spectrum, even though typically they are out of the spectrum, they very much fit, fit into the spectrum of the teletogenic orientation. And uh, yes, so I know it's getting, this activity is getting monotonous, but I would appreciate some responses. Yes, the bonding. Yes, sir. This uh, this child is actually very special to me personally also because I worked with him for a period of eight months and there was really a bond which was building. Uh, I could personally feel that so much difference was there from the first session and towards the ending. And uh, because of COVID, unfortunately, I couldn't continue. And his father also really tried to have online sessions with me, but it was just not happening. So, yeah, it... it there was a yes, social and emotional intelligence, absolutely. Resilience, flourishing, yes, wellness, bond, connectedness, attachment, belonging. Yes. Thank you so much for the responses. And these are my highlights, which is very less for some reason. <laughs> Now, as I was watching, I could also think of a lot of different things. I don't know why it's very less, but thank you for all the inputs. And I also feel the locus of control needs to be highlighted because in the initial stages, he was not able to control his feelings. He was not able to control the stereotypic. He used to do this all the time initially. But uh, as you can see in the video also during the course of the sessions, at least during the music therapy sessions, he was not doing it much. He he starts, he goes, his hands goes like that and he, he wants to start it. But then he starts playing the instrument for some reason because he's drawn more towards the instrument and it really distracted him from the stereotypic movements that he was having. So yes, autism spectrum uh, disorder individuals are very much into the spectrum of the salutogenic orientation. This uh, uh, background, this was actually a puppet show which uh, we wrote and created for children who were li living in a home and all the children were having cancer and they were undergoing uh, the cancer treatment in various stages. And this was this is the Shine Gel home. Uh, it is a residential place where children with cancer are there and the mothers also live there with them. So they don't have a normal childhood and uh, they don't... Uh, they always be there and they don't go to their homes. Maybe once in a while they go and come back, but they are there in the residential place. And this play, this puppet show was actually for a period of eight to nine minutes, but I have cut and I'm showing a very short portion of that.
this was a very interesting experience for me because uh, i had fun with my friends also while creating the script and we made the puppet uh, we were sitting behind the screen and doing it so it was a very fun experience and therapeutic for us as well and for the children also uh, we tried to reduce their uh, fear for needles because during the chemotherapy process and generally also they are uh, exposed to a lot of injections and a uh, lot of medicines that they have to take and they were all very small children they were even babies which were there uh, from months old until up to the age of 15 16 so it was a diverse population and they had uh, they really had fun watching this and they wanted the puppets for themselves so we prom we we couldn't give them because uh, you know if i give to one child the next child will cry so we <laughs> promised them that we will make puppets for them and give so really had a nice session and after this session we had an in interactive drumming as well for them and then we had a session for the parents also so it is very important to address the parents as well because they are looking at their child every day suffering going through treatment and you know facing such a life threatening disease and uh, important it is very important to address the caretakers in any uh, any population not only here so this was this is the background of the session and uh, yes i'm waiting for your responses yes absolutely ma'am caregiver stress is very much equal to the person who is yes connectedness, learn hopefulness, empowerment, honor, humor, learn optimism. <coughs> yes, sense of coherence, action competence, focus of control, yes. They very much feel that their life is not in their control because they have this disease and they are regularly going for treatments and everything is being taken care of. They might feel that, what am I doing in life? I'm not like the other children. I'm not able to play. So these kind of sessions really give them, them hope and also the locus of the control in their life. Every time we get to present these videos, bring back all the memories and the amount of work that we could do and we are unable to do, hoping in future we can do more. Yes, ma'am. Definitely. Gratitude, yes. Connectedness, belonging, hopefulness. Thank you so much for your responses. And uh, these are my uh, highlights in the assets of health and well-being where we'll be able to help these children. Because, and I also want to highlight that as we all have read, uh, known in this webinar series that sense of coherence is developing from infancy. And these children here also were very diverse, as I told before. There were even babies who were just carried by their mothers and they were sitting and watching with them. And they were, there were teenage children. So everybody is fit to be inside the umbrella of the salitogenesis umbrella is what I want to say. And the last video,
is uh, after participating in this music that uh, while feeling that the two humans are maximum three humans will be represented in Yes, so I I felt it is very oh am I on mute? Yeah, I felt it is very important to show towards the last the palliative care, which is the end of life care as well, because it is not only for the people who are who know that you no know, my disease or disorder is going to be okay and I'm going to feel okay for the client. Even for them, the health and well being is impaired uh, a great way. And think of a person who knows that. there is no way out of this disease and i am they know that they are going to die in a few weeks or a few months and think of their mind state it, it i would say the sense of coherence is going to be so low they will not have any hopefulness they will not their quality of life will be very low the locus of control they 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 think that it's already told to them that there is no control over their life it is going to end but still in that limited time whatever they have this these kind of experiences will give them the locus of control to say okay i have three months and what what am i going to do in this three months is can i uh, have positive experiences i can have positive experience with my family i can write a song in the music therapy session and i can give it to my family i can talk about my life and pay, pay the tribute to my life which i had throughout this many years and it is very touching uh, to work with these kind of patients and they gain a lot from uh, these kind of sessions and it is not uh, necessary we should never ignore that saying okay it is their end of life what are we going to do about it we shouldn't we should never ignore them so yeah they also fit inside the salutogenesis umbrella and oh sorry I, <laughs> these are my perspectives but please give me your perspectives as well learn hopefulness very true wellness yes momentary wellness gratitude endure that which cannot be cured yes okay so in conclusion uh, to the to my presentation i want to re i try to say that music can be used in the global orientation aspect by all the human beings because everybody even though they are not trained they are trained whatever they can make music they have the innate capacity to make music as well as appreciate even though people don't want to sing or play instruments they can listen to music and appreciate even people who are not trained in music also when people sing they will say no there is something wrong because that because that capacity is innate it is inborn in every human being and they can use it as one of the resources to cope up with the stress they are facing in everyday life and i feel that as healthcare professionals and people who are inclined towards this it is our duty to take it up to the general public and say that music is a way that you can use in daily life to cope up with your stresses and coming to the salutogenic orientation music therapy is one among the many many professions that can be used by healthcare professionals uh, for focusing on or promoting the uh, assets of health and well being rather than focusing on the assets of disease so right now in the medical uh, professional scenario we've moved a lot from the biomedical approach towards a biopsychosocial approach and now from pathogenesis we are moving forward towards salutogenesis and there are great heights that we have to reach more and personally also i i, I feel that i have to enhance myself a lot in this salutogenic orientation and i have a lot to learn so here i would like to thank our icm team and family and our director sir for giving me this wonderful opportunity of getting to know more about this term salutogenesis and salutogenic orientation i really learned a lot sir and ma'am thank you so much and thank you for listening if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer thank you so much janita for that marvelous presentation um and it really brought to life how uh, music therapy can enable a sense of wellness to manifest across the life continuum and right from the children 
to the palliative situation. Uh, very beautiful examples. And I, I think this is what we need to share with the world that, you know, there's something we can all do for each other. And thank you for that marvelous presentation. We have about 10 minutes. If there are questions or any points anybody would like to do, I will just give the I'm just giving the option for people to unmute at the own. I switched that option off. So you can just unmute and say anything or you can type it in the chat box. First of all, congratulations, Janita. That was so wonderful. Um, again, you brought out this aspect that we are so fortunate to be in this uh, you know, medical system, uh, medical setting where we have this opportunity to be working with patients or you know outreach community programs we have different settings and uh, you can reach out along with the medical care through these uh, therapeutic uh, modalities uh, so bringing both these together be it uh, yoga therapy be it music therapy bringing that along with the medical care you know it's kind of more a holistic uh, treatment uh, that that the patient is enabled to attain or get. So that way, I think we are all so fortunate to be a uh, part of this uh, university, a part of ISEM and the therapy centers that we are. So good luck and yes. Thank you, ma'am. All the best. May I speak, sir? May I speak, sir? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Please, sir. Namaste, sir and madam. Uh, congratulations for a wonderful presentation. And I'm very happy to know that uh, such a wonderful work is being done there. And uh, seeing uh, those people almost counter stairs like and uh, terminal stages and uh, giving relief, uh, excellent. Uh, as usual, I will I'll express my ignorance of uh, uh, the innocence about the music therapy by being a novice. Two things I wish to uh, know from you. One is, can music therapy be used as a standalone treatment, not as an adjunct with other treatments? Is there any condition where just music alone will cure? So is there anything like that? That's the first thing. The second thing is, with sagittogenesis, naturally it should be not just for individuals. For community whole, it should be beneficial. So, uh, as a research model, we should have the three levels. First level is at the university level, music therapy uh, departments where they will be avant guards and they will be the forerunners and they will be uh, making the path that for such a condition, for such an individual, this thing has to be done. So, there, that type of thing. Second thing is maybe in the ordinary medical uh, colleges or ordinary hospitals, can they practice? Just Carnatic music, every day one musician will be coming, one hour spending with uh, his recital, whatever he feels like, irrespective of who, who individual is there, who which patient is there, which raga he is going to sing and all. Daily one hour Carnatic recital. That is the second level. The third level is ordinary hospitals where they cannot afford uh, the personnel and all. Daily they will be playing background cassettes, uh, the music. Carnatic music every day, one hour or two hours, without any human intervention. So will there be any difference between uh, these levels? Just music alone will be helpful, or human interaction extra helpful, or individual tailor-made uh, uh, interventions more, as any, any studies conducted in this aspect? Thank you for that very detailed question, sir. Uh, to answer the first question, so music therapy as a standalone model, uh, primarily we, we will not say that it can be standalone. There has to be medical treatment that is being given by the physicians and it is always an interdisciplinary approach where other medical professionals are working. But sometimes in the rehabilitation setup where uh, the 
the patient has already gone through the treatment and it's just going to be rehabilitation. Sometimes if it's okay, we can have music therapy as a standalone model, but majorly it is an interdisciplinary approach where physicians and other healthcare professionals are going to be involved. So we will never say that, okay, because you've started music therapy, you need not see your physician or you need not take your medications. The medications are very important and music therapy is an adjuvant therapy which is going to help in the treatment process and in the speeding up of the healing process and also with the coping of uh, coping mechanism for the treatment because the medical treatments can be very hectic and strenuous for the clients as well as the caretakers so this is this, this can provide as a good coping mechanism to undergo the treatment process itself and the next uh, part i think i remember for, uh, yes <laughs> Playing, uh, ah, yes, spending some time with the musician every day for one hour. Yes, it will help, but uh, okay. it won't be music. One, one, one sentence only, I will play. Three levels. One is music therapist with expertise and tailor made interventions. Second level, a musician will be offering, but he will not be knowing anything about music therapy and the nuances. The third thing is just a cassette play. First, I want to clarify that there are two things, music therapy and music medicine. So music therapy is what we talked about today, where there are going to be interactions between the therapist and the client, and there is a therapeutic relationship there. And when it comes to music medicine, it is just listening to music where pre-recorded music, which you had mentioned as cassettes and CDs, pre-recorded music is going to be played for the clients, but by the other healthcare professionals who are interested in music, but they are not trained music therapists and they don't know how to sing or play instruments for their clients. So if the other medical healthcare professionals feel that, okay, my patient will have uh, benefits from listening to music, but I that there is no music therapist available there, they can make use of music medicine by just playing pre-recorded music to them. And uh, listening to music every day for one, uh, one hour by a tra trained musician can be one of the everyday uses of music. So as I've told, everyday uses of music, they can use music as a resource to cope up with stress. And it can be with a diverse population inconsiderate of who they are, what is their background and everything. But I would say the preference and the familiarity is going to play a very important role because uh, with the genre of Carnatic music, I may be comfortable with that. But for a person who is not really exposed to Carnatic music on a daily basis, or if they are not familiar, or it's just that they don't like it, it is not going to work for them. Maybe through the course, they are going to learn to enjoy that genre of music but initially it might not you know intrigue their interest so familiarity and preference will have an effect and yes just listening to music and going to concerts and listening to a professional musician will help them in the general aspects of health where uh, it is not going to be a therapy process but it's still going to be therapeutic so here i would like to state the difference between therapy and therapeutic for something to qualify as therapy, there has to be a structured process which is involved. There has to be a trained professional and there has to be a client who wants to seek to optimize their health and well-being. But when it comes to therapeutic, anything can be therapeutic. Attending one of the webinars can be therapeutic. Just listening to music by myself can be therapeutic. Eating chocolate, eating ice cream can be therapeutic. So anything for different individuals can be therapeutic, but for any particular thing to qualify as therapy, it has to have some criteria. So this listening to music by a trained musician is going to be therapeutic for different people, but it's not going to be therapy as such. So I hope I answered your questions, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I like this type of discussion because it gives some nice clarity. And I love that distinction between therapy and something being therapeutic. I think it's a nice distinction because, you know, going for a beach walk can be therapeutic. And, but it's whether it would classify as therapy, uh, you know, is, is actually, it's a, it's a very good point you brought out because even from uh, the yoga therapy point of view, I think this is very good. Because uh, all yoga can be therapeutic. That would be how I would approach it from taking a lead on that. But then yoga therapy is something different. 
So, you know, though all yoga can be therapeutic, yoga therapy requires a structure. Mm -hmm. So similarly, music having therapeutic benefits. And, uh, uh, you know, again, I think the uh, preference of the individual, I think Dr. Meena pointed that out in a chat box. The preference of the individual has to be taken into consideration. So the cultural ethos, what type of music that culture likes, that individual likes, is going to also play an important role in the uh, effect. But I think it would be an interesting study to be done, maybe with community medicine or somebody, uh, where Sir has suggested that three levels, one you know a one-on-one -on -one impact as opposed to a community, a, you know multiple people in the same session. Uh, it would be interesting to see. I believe that all of it will have positive impact um, in the overall study. I, I don't think we would, I, I'm not too sure how much we'll find that one is better than the other, but I, we may find that there are subtle differences between the groups. Uh, and uh, I think I think it's a good, uh, good pathway for future research um, in tune with community medicine and, you know, the social uh, aspects. So. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we are going to go into the second session uh, uh, because I'm being mindful of time here today. Thank you so much, Janita, for that beautiful session. Really wonderful to see the way our young uh, faculty are standing up to be counted. So congratulations on a job well done. Thank you, sir. I'm now going to the second part of today's session. And in today's session, the second part, we are going to have a session which is given jointly by our two assistant professors in the School of Yoga Therapy. And Yoga Chemal G. Dayanidhi, who is assistant professor in the School of Yoga Therapy, ISCM. He has a master's in yoga. He has PhD diploma in yoga therapy. He also has qualifications in the computer field also, mathematics and had cleared the UGC net in yoga for assistant professor. He has been an examiner for the yoga certification board through Indian Yoga Association uh, from September uh, 2016 onwards. Has been a student and teacher of Rishi Culture Ashtanga Yoga Parampara and part of the Gitananda tradition for more than two decades. He is the active uh, general secretary of Siddha Bhumi Puducher Yoga Asana Sport Association affiliated with the National Yoga Asana Sports Federation, where he has been a jury member. Uh, he is the academic chairperson for the Indian Yoga Association, Pondicherry, having 13 papers, seven compilations, five abstracts, and six copyrights published. He is currently pursuing PhD in yoga therapy with a focus on yoga therapy and psychodermatological conditions. So we welcome Dayanidhi, and along with him, we have uh, Yoga Chamal Dr. R. Balaji, who is also assistant professor at the School of Yoga Therapy, ISCM, a student of the Rishi Culture Ashtanga Yoga Parampara for about 28 years. That's a long time, actually, if you can think about it. A gold medalist in both our PhD diploma in yoga therapy and the MPhil from the erstwhile CITER. So one of our star alumni who is with us now as a faculty. He has done a fellowship in emergency medicine and diabetology from IMA and qualified as assistant professor to the UGC NET, a research coordinator for Puducherry chapter of IYA, and a member of education and training committee of NYSF. He is a master trainer for yoga therapy in the National Skill Development Corporation, has 10 papers, five abstracts, a chapter, and five copyrights published. He is a medical consultant at Mother Care Foundation, a residential center for alcohol de addiction. And his areas of interest include metabolic syndrome and de addiction. And his paper on yoga and diabetic lung won Best Paper Award at one of the international conferences a few years ago. Currently pursuing his PhD in yoga therapy on adjuvant yoga therapy and metabolic syndrome. So I would like to take this opportunity to welcome uh, Dayanidhi and Balaji to take over this session and let us see some of the yogic practical approaches towards manifesting wellness. So namaste and welcome to both of you. Over yeah. to you. 
thank you sir thank you sir thank you for this uh, wonderful opportunity in this uh, great uh, star walls in both saltogenesis and yoga therapy field and uh, thank you for uh, uh, giving a uh, time to speak about uh, the basic practices of uh, uh, yoga techniques uh, what we are done in uh, uh, school of yoga therapy and uh, here we are actually focusing on two aspects one in uh, um, saltogenesis approach uh, to students so that means yoga biasa concept to all uh, um, constituent colleges of uh, Sri Balaji Vidya Pid, um, and uh, the uh, therapy concept that we are following here uh, to the patients which are actually referred by different uh, departments uh, ma mainly general medicine uh, ortho and uh, most of the uh, dermatology department uh, they are referring patients to yoga therapy and they get uh, 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 evidential uh, improvement uh, in the uh, therapy practices and today we are going to have a, a, a few uh, practices basic practices that we are uh, mainly teach the patients as well as uh, the students uh, um, circle and um, the and the demonstration of the practices uh, and we have uh, myself and bala here uh, and the uh, first few practices like jati sasana and pranayama will be uh, uh, demonstrated by ba Dr. Balaji and then uh, other techniques will be demonstrated by myself and Bala will give the instruction. And um, before uh, um, going into the uh, session and we, um, I just welcome Bala for the uh, demonstration purpose. Yeah, so uh, first, uh, normally we uh, start with uh, any practices, uh, we have a different set of uh, jatis and today we have planned a few uh, jatis, few kriyas, that means uh, uh, loosening uh, practices um, we are going to discuss here and jatis is nothing but the movement uh, uh, synchronized with uh, um, breathing as well as uh, uh, few uh, jatis. Yeah. So we are starting with the head movement. And the jatis will be classified with a different set of uh, joints. Normally, we start with head and then shoulder, hand, trunk, hip, knee, and then uh, ankles. So this type of uh, major joints and uh, movements we start with uh, here Bala is doing his neck movement. And normally, we do this uh, movement uh, synchronous with breathing. So normally, we just uh, do uh, the right side and the left side movement with breathing. Normally, breathe in, he turn his head to the right side and breathe out, come back to the center. Breathe in left and come back to the center. Breathe in up, come back to center and breathe in down, come back to center. So these are the basic movements which will be done for the neck and followed by the complete neck rotation. So normally, uh, the neck is the bridge between the uh, head and the uh, body. So by doing these practices we need to be so aware and concentrated by doing these practices and it has to be slow and steady movements and after this set of uh, neck rotation and neck movement we just concentrate on the shoulder movement just lifting up the shoulders up and down and then slowly rotate the move, uh, shoulders back to front and then front to back so these movements has to be done with slow and conscious movement. Uh, so they can do with relax. The students or the patients they are doing here, they do with relax and they can do uh, the movements as much they can. Okay. And the next we are going to lift the hands to the shoulder level. So each movement we are always focus on breath. So while breathing, slowly lift the hands to the shoulder level and breathe out. Slowly relax, come back. Now breathe in, slowly lift. And breathe out, relax. Breathe in. Out, relax. Now slowly stretch your arms by the side. Breathe in. Breathe out, relax. Breathe in. Out, relax. So one more time, breathe in, slowly lift your arms up. Give a nice stretch up to 
the biceps touch the ears, give a nice stretch and then slowly relax. Breathe out, relax. So always do the movement with focus on breath, which give you a nice relaxation. Yeah, now we can go to move some basic movements for the trunk. So just like slightly keep your legs slightly apart, maybe one foot apart, one to one and a half foot and bring the hands in front of your chest. Then slowly turn your entire back to the right side and give a nice twist to the entire trunk and then slowly come back to center. Now slowly left side, give a nice stretch and turn to your left, come back to center. Slowly in, right side, out, come back to center. And then in left, just out, come back to center. So after that, now we are going to do two more rounds. While turning to the right, we need to stretch your right hand and then give, give a nice turn. Then it gives uh, much more flexibility to the entire trunk, much more twist. So this helps a lot to relieve the back ache and back uh, stiffness, actually. So one more time, slowly turn to your right side and then come back and then slowly left and then come back. Nice. Now just relax your hands Good. and uh, relax your legs. Yeah. Now we can uh, do some uh, basic hip rotation. So slightly keep your legs apart and keep your hands on your hip and slowly rotate your hip in a clockwise direction. We normally call this hip rotation as the uh, grinder kriya for the uh, students. Uh, for students uh, under much understanding. They actually like to do do this. But this movement actually helps to improve the uh, focus on Manipura Chakra and the entire hip region. So the hip is the main part which actually uh, joins the upper part of our body and the lower part of our body. So by doing these practices and the entire uh, uh, middle region gets strengthened and by doing the practices, it will be um, easier to move the practices like uh, uh, Ardhakadi Chakrasana or uh, Trikonasana, any practices, this hip movement is a uh, most essential thing to relax ourselves. And the next thing we are going to do, the knee movement. So, so just keep your hands on top of your knees. So just bend your knee and then stretch. So this, and then stretch, bend and then stretch. Then we can slowly rotate your knee in the clockwise direction as well as the anti-clockwise direction. This gives a nice massage to the entire knee, thigh, and the calf muscle. Yeah, then slowly come back. Now we are going to do the ankle movement. So while you are ready, slowly come up on your toes and then slowly on your heels. Toes and then heels. Yeah, now once you are ready, slowly come up on your toes and just walk on your toes. So this uh, walking movement on your toes and on your, and then once you are ready, then slowly keep walking on your heels. So just moving, start walking on your toes, front and, front and back, on your heels, front back, which actually uh, work as a reflexology because of most of the nerves end up on your uh, hands and the Food. So by doing this movement, this type of movements, the uh, um, effect on the nerves in the toes, which actually helps in the different organs. Yeah. Now just relax. Yeah. Now we are going to focus on some basic jatis or kriyas. We actually call it as a shake and throw. So normally this type of uh, jatis we actually do by shaking the right hand. So just relax your fingers and just shake your right hand, which actually give a nice massage, nice feeling to the entire hand and doing the thing on the left side. So which actually increase your blood circulation and improve your focus on your body. So then doing on the both hands. So just give a nice shake on both hands, both all fingers. And then slowly we are going to do the shake and throw. Just breathe in. Give a nice tight, give, just hold in on your breath, full inhalation. And while you breathe out, throw it out. So we can do one more time. So just have a nice shake. Now just 
Keep your hands up and just give a nice shake. Down and come up on your right side. Left. Just give a nice shake and hold tight. In. Out. Yeah. Just relax. Keep your hands by the side. So normally this type of uh, the shake and throw practices, the students can able to feel their blood circulation while teaching this type of practices. Most of the students or patients, they are the first time they can feel their blood circulation. So normally while after doing these practices, we can feel the uh, there is something uh, um, uh, running on your hand. So most of the uh, people don't know what it is. And then only they realize that, okay, blood circulation. Okay, so these type of practices, they're able to understand what they are doing and they can able to feel themselves. So this is a basic concept of yoga that is understanding themselves as in uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita, uh, Lord Krishna tell that uh, Samatvam Yoga Uchyate. So bring the harmony, bring the equanimity. So they can able to understand what we are. So to bring the equanimity, the first step is to understand what we are and understand where we are. So by doing these practices, we can able to know where we are and what we are to do to reach that stage. So this type of basic practices helps them to understand their uh, stability, their what they are. And now we are going to do some basic asanas. And today we have planned to do few asanas, uh, uh, mainly uh, Trikon Asana and the uh, Arthakadi Chakrasana. And before going to this uh, asana posture, we are going to uh, demonstrate this Surya Namaskar, which is nothing but the sequence of asana. So here we are going to, Bala will going to demonstrate the Aruna Surya Namaskar. So start with Anshali Mudra, breathe in and breathe out, slowly move down to Hasta Pada Asana. And while you breathe in, slowly lift your head up, Sirasa Uttana. And while you breathe out, slowly move back to Chatur Dandasana. And slowly breathe in, move back to Kokilasana and breathe out Meruvasana. And in Meruvasana, we normally perform Nasarka Mukabashrika. Nasarka means nose, muk, musa, muka, mouth. So breathe in through nose and breathe out through mouth. Okay. And then slowly bring your legs forward with Sirasa Uttana. And while you breathe out, Astapada. And breathe in, slowly bring your hands to Anjali Mudra. And while you breathe out, relax, Samasadhyasana. Yeah. Just relax for a few minutes in Samasthati Asana. So normally the Aruna Surya Namaskar, which is the Aruna is uh, the morning red or orange color sun. So in that time, what we are performing is Aruna Surya Namaskar. Normally the Surya Namaskar we are performing in the early morning, we get the energy, Usha Shakti from the sun and uh, vitamin D. So most of the glands we are opening and we are able to get the uh, practices. The, this, this type of Surya Namaskar practices, we need to, they are, while they are performing, they can able to understand the um, movement, what they are doing, and they can able to stretch the entire body muscles, front part, back, and the hand balancing, and the back bending. So all the uh, category of asanas, are mingled in the Surya Namaskar, plus they are doing the uh, asana with breath. So that's the uh, main thread of practice. Okay, whichever practices we are doing, we always focus on the breath and the slow and steady movement. So we always focus on the movement and the breath. So whenever the practices they are doing, they are able to get awareness because we know that the breath and the uh, mind are correlated. So whenever we focus on breath, we can able to focus on our mind and the thoughts and the emotions. So uh, as uh, Swami Gitananda Giri Guru Maharaj said that uh, yoga is fourfold awareness. So awareness of body, awareness of mind, awareness of emotion, awareness of awareness itself. And as Amaji added, awareness of how and never we are. So by getting awareness, so these are the basic movements with breathing and the practices able to lead to that and from that we can able to go on to the other philosophy of yoga practices and now we are going to uh, 
perform two more asanas one is tadasana the tadasana helps to stretch the entire body region from the toe to the uh, hands so slowly breathe in bring your hands up clasp your hands and slowly give a nice stretch and come up on your toes and in the asana hold for few seconds and then slowly relax come back and then relax so whenever we are performing asana we are holding the asana we should not hold the breath so holding the asana is important but we should not hold the breath it should be a shallow breath or we are doing it with normal breathing so always focusing on breath by doing the pra practices and different muscles and whenever we have to remember that by doing the asana we are going to stretch the different muscles or uh, give pressure on different muscle different parts of the body and while we are relaxing the blood flow blood energy will focus will go to that certain parts and the muscle or the certain region get relaxed so that's why always performing any asana we are going to relax for few minutes and to get the relaxedness relaxedness and now we are going to do one more asana which is nothing but trikon asana slowly bring your legs to one of two three feet apart slowly bring your hands up to your shoulder region and turn your head and foot to your right side and then slowly move down so by doing the asana trikon asana so it is fully stretch lateral stretch and turn your head up and then slowly once you are ready slowly look down come up turn your head and foot now the left side so while doing practices we are always focus on the right and the left so complementary asanas so these are the practices this is not only the practices we are doing physically so when our practices we are doing the right left which is always hot cold uh, when we are tense we need to get relaxation so this is the balancing okay so by doing any practices it helps to create balancing and uh, as already said so balancing leads to harmony and equanimity now we are going to do few sitting asanas uh, first asana we are choosing choose is a paschima uttana asana so whenever doing the paschima uttana asana always going into the asanas we are just do some basic push up basic warm up by moving into the before moving into the asana the first asana we are going to do is paschima uttana asana and before going into that, that just breathe in while you breathe out push yourself as much you can and try to touch the toes and then come up breathe out blast out and move down breathe in come up and just relax relax your hand so before going to any asana we just do this type of few practices to train the body what we are going to do uh, we have one famous comedy uh, uh, in in here and it's uh, um edha pannalum plan panni pannano abdin solli we have one comedy by vadivelu so it's a family, famous comedy actor but uh, in fact it's not a comedy we need to be know that before doing any practices anything in our life we need to plan ourselves so like that by doing practices we need to train our body so that the body knows that what we are going to do and our body cooperates so now in modern modern scenario in modern lifestyle the coordination between body and mind have a big gap there the uh, disease starts and uh, um, stress accumulate and the uh, concept of adi vyadi concept occurs now slowly relax come back and relax right. now we are going to do the last asana for today's session is uh, ushtrasana ushtrasana which is a camel posture so which is this ushtrasana is actually helpful for the lower abdominal breathing and also it gives a entire good stretch to the entire back region um, and there are different uh, var variations in ushtrasana actually what balaji is performing is the perfect ushtrasana camel pose and there are different aspects apurna ushtrasana purna paripurna ushtrasana and it will be uh, 
tailored according to the patient need. So the practices what you are doing looks like difficult, but uh, it will be done according to the tailors, according to the patient's need, and they can do their capacity. It's not that they have to do to the full stretch in the first session itself. It's not like that. They have to, they, they will do their own comfortable zone and they have to keep on um, move forward. The, the uh, basic thing in yoga therapy is that we have to compare with ourselves, not with others. Okay. By doing any asana, any practices, they have to compare ourselves and these things helps them to uh, bring their betterment in their life. Okay. Now, yeah, once you relax, slowly come up. Yeah. So these are the basic asana practices uh, we are not normally given to the people. And now we are going to the pranayama session. And the pranayama session I'm going to demonstrate and Bala will continue and, and, and give the instruction how to perform and give the entire physiological and psychological benefits and how it's helpful for the people patient also. Namaste to all. Uh, we just saw a few yoga techniques that will able to achieve the goal of salus and genesis, the salutogenesis. The other most few important components are the pranayama, the kriya, and the relaxation. So we are going to see few pranayamas. The first of the pranayama is the brahmari pranayama. It is one of the Nada Pranayamas. So how we are going to do the Brahmari Pranayama is we are going to apply Shanmukhi Mutra or Yoni Mutra. We are blocking all the senses, which helps to feel the sense of vibration throughout the body. We are closing our ears by the thumb and the eyebrows using the index finger and nose by the middle finger and the ring finger over the upper lip and the little finger over the lower lip. We are not going to push very hard. It's just going to apply it gently and softly because it is our own body. We don't want to push or hurt our own body. So we are keeping the mudra in a gentle manner. We are breathing in two, three, four, five, six. While breathing out, we are going to with the sound of the female breathe, the high pitched voice. Breathing in one, two, three, four, five, six. Breathe out. Continue few rounds of the Brahmari Pranayama. Brahmari Pranayama is one of the classical. Nada Pranayama, the most important aspect of scientific technique of this Nada Pranayama is one technique where the ex exhalation is increased than the inspiration. So expiration is increased here. And this is very good for all the most kind of respiratory disorders. And it is proven scientifically because we are inhaling and while you are pronouncing the sound, the mm, the high pitch, the female B sound, automatically the expiration is increased when compared to the inspiration. So inspiration, we need some effect, effort, but for expiration, we don't need any effort at all. It's like filling the air in the balloon and releasing it, a similar kind of uh, technique. So because people are not concentrating on the expiration that lacks a lot of issues in the respiratory system and that occurs the disease. So that's why the Nada Pranayama is very useful for these kind of disorders. The second technique, what he is going to perform is the Sheetali Pranayama. Beak, tongue, breath. While inhaling, you have to protrude your tongue out, fold it like a straw and inhale through your 
tongue, the mouth. And exhale through your nose. Shitali pranayama is one of the classical cooling pranayama. It's like the big tongue breath. Why it means like that is while protruding the tongue out, it just signifies how the bird's beak. That's why it's mean as big tongue breath. And it is one of the classical pranayama, as I said before. And it is very helpful for uh, the obesity patient because it acts on the satiety center. It acts on the satiety center on the brain and it helps to reduce the thirst, hunger feelings. So it is very good for obesity patients and it is useful for all kinds of pitta disorders. I'll ask uh, Diana to continue a few rounds of uh, Shitali Pranayama. First, Pranayama is one of the vital components of yoga therapy or yoga. Yoga therapy is a drop in an ocean of yoga. Prana is a vital cosmic energy. Ayama is a controlled conscious expansion. It is an important aspect of a therapy which can be used as a monotherapy or it can be used as a combination of uh, asanas, combination with asanas, kriyas, jatis or even with relaxation. The most important thing is it can be practiced in day-to-day -day activities also while walking, while sitting in the chair at our office, while lying down in the bed. The pranayama can be adapted in daily activities also. So the next pranayama we are going to show is the Nadi Shuddhi. Nadi Shuddhi, we are first adapting the mudra called the Nasarga Mudra or Nasika Mudra, bending the index and the middle finger and applying over the nostril and close the inhale through the left nostril and exhale through the right nostril. Inhale, right nostril, and exhale, left nostril. This is a single round of Nadi Shuddhi. I'll ask Anna to continue few rounds of Nadi Shuddhi Pranayama. Nadi Shuddhi, as the name indicates, it's a pranayama which cleanses all the Nadis. We are having 72,000 Nadis in our body. Nadis are the very subtle channels which carries the energies. I already told pranayama. Prana is a vital cosmic energy. So Nadi Shuddhi Pranayama, it cleanses all the 72 Nadis. Nadis are the subtle channels which carries energy all over our bodies. So this Nadi Shuddhi has a therapeutic benefit of cleansing all the Nadis. Of these 72,000 Nadis, Ida, Pingla and Sushumna, right, left and the center one. Yoga always emphasizes on balance. So this technique helps to balance, to cleanse also. If you analyze the breathing pattern of this Nadi Shuddhi, it comes to the symbol of infinity. So our prana is infinity. It's something related which connects our body to the ultimate soul, the Purana Purusha. That is the, the significance of pranayama. That is why it can be used as a monotherapy and it can be combined with other techniques, other yoga techniques. So the vital aspect of pranayama are much more than we think. The next important thing is we are done with pranayama. Now we are going to perform few rounds of Kaya Priya. Please relax, lie down in Shavasana. Kaya means body, Kriya means systematic rational movement. Here we are going to do the movement for legs, the lower limb, upper limb, and the head and neck. First, for lower limb, apart your legs. Now breathe in, bring your foot, turn inwards, and bring it as much as possible so that your big toe touches the ground. Now breathe out, relax. Now, one round of the first for lower limb, first round on the legs. I'll ask you to continue for two more rounds. Relax. And the last round. Now join your legs. Now for the 
upper limbs for the hands inhale and apart your turn and apart your hands and expand your chest exhale relax inhale press turn and expand of chest out inhale out relax hands now the third part is the head and neck inhale turn your head to the right side and exhale turn your head to the left side two more time inhale exhale inhale and exhale keep your head in center relax now we are going to do all the three simultaneously the legs the hands and the head and neck inhale the hands and the neck exhale repeat it for other two more rounds on your own count kaya kriya again kaya means the body kriya is a systematic rational movement and we are applying breath here the most important thing in yoga is wherever whatever we do a movement we are able to apply breath in it actually this kaya kriya is one of the worst kriya of musculoskeletal disorders and it has a systematic rational movement from head to from head to toes it acts on its own and relieve the tension and stress in own on its own way gently relax what after a session of yoga will ask them to relax the shavasana the name is literally means corpse pose but it's not a cough we are breathing here that's the only difference and in relaxation also we emphasize on breathing because prana i already told it's a vital cosmic energy that connects the body and mind breath connects the body and mind that's a saying uh, by our uh, doctor sir yatho mana tatho prana wherever the mind glows automatically the breath flows there itself so the breath plays a important aspect in healing too and whatever we do in our yoga class at the end of the class there is some time for relaxation because relaxation is the key element for healing whatever we do in yoga techniques we will able to gain some energy we utilize some energy to practices and we gain some energy we gain some energy do with those techniques and these techniques we gain some energy we have to conserve that energy to conserve this energy the relaxation is mandatory that's why for every sessions after yoga class the relaxation is emphasized more if you do a yoga session for 45 minutes 15 minutes of relaxation is mandatory so we'll give quarter amount for relaxation that helps to connect yourself to within yourself that is the most important aspect of relaxation and it helps for healing for zayana to come up slowly and gently stretching stretching up and while coming up from the yoga practice also we are following certain steps it's not just like getting up jumping out from the body going out, going out and uh, change your dress and get your bike and go on to your work it's not like that after every yoga session there are certain procedures how to get relax yourself and get back to the normal so like that from shavasana from lying down to sitting there are few techniques how to follow it today is just 
we showed what are the few yoga techniques that can be applied to bring the health back whenever we are diseased if we apply these tools of yoga as a form of a therapy like asana pranayama kriya relaxation surya namaskar we can able to attain the swastha that is the salutogenesis the swastha sthana the state of wellness the state of well being the equal and the state of wholesomeness we have done this to our patients and we have treated more than 1 lakh patients in the past past decade through the school of yoga therapy previously it is called the center for yoga therapy education and research now it is school of yoga therapy of iscm and we have published more than 170 scientific articles by applying these kind of techniques to different kinds of patients who are referred from the general medicine department respiratory medicine obstetrics and gynecology psychiatry dermatology and pediatrics too and it is able to achieve the result what a patient have expected from us because the most important thing guru taught me is to listen to the patient and help to achieve at least half the patient what you expected from the doctor and as a doctor as a therapy we the proud school of yoga therapy of sri balaji vidyapeet we have attained what we uh, what our patient has expected from us and those more than 172 papers are the evidence that what we are doing here actually and not only as a scientific paper we also go and teach this in a outreach community meena ma'am works a great on the special children's myself with the de addiction patients and it applied the various form of therapies as in a research angle and the therapy angle and we are also teaching in the education also so yoga has applies in in a three uh, three pillars of uh, the uh, educational and to provide promote it as a wholesome care so this is what we are doing and this is a few example what we demonstrated today is a few example how yoga can act as a tool to be attain the state of swastha and for this we have showed few techniques and this is very superficial if you go into deeper and it totally differs and for each patient we will teach according to your uh, according to their talent actually we don't ask them to force and nothing is compulsory in yoga and here there is no instrument there is, it is not very costly our own body is the instrument here and the own prana that is the big instrument here in yoga therapy so you can do it at most of the times and you can get the benefit but only disadvantage is it is not a magic pill it doesn't act as a magic pill you have to do it rhythm regularity and repetition as said by our mata amaji meenakshi devi bhavanani regularity rhythm repetition and discipline det determination and continuous practice we can able to attain the state of swastha the salutogenesis i once again thank my colleague dr uh, dayanidi and uh, our director sir uh, dr anand balayogi bhavanani sir and our vice principal madam dr meena ramanathan madam for giving us this wonderful opportunity to demonstrate a few techniques to how to uh, yoga techniques approach the salutogenesis thank you so thank you uh, sir and ma'am for giving this wonderful opportunity and uh, this in this uh, stage i want to thank uh, not only our uh, uh, sir uh, our uh, director it also because of uh, uh, the management support and also the support and also the thought from our uh, former vc uh, seth raman sir and uh, parija sir all their support leads us to be here ak sir and uh, uh, and uh, the most important thing uh, uh, avishay antoniski which is uh, in his first talk he just uh, uh, gave that there is a uh, ease or disease the river in between so that we have to choose and yoga is uh, one of the most important tool to make that possible to make that uh, thing to choose and uh, to choose the correct salutogenesis path 
and uh, we always uh, use that uh, slide which is uh, that thing uh, which is uh, nothing but uh, an arrow both arrows which uh, shows that health disease and in between uh, there is a break and which is fall to the pathogenesis and uh, saltogenesis helps to to lead the health once again so by doing these type of uh, practices it really helps a lot to come back to our original state and relieve from stress and this really helps a lot uh, to manage ourselves and as per uh, margaret ma'am said that the grr uh, generalized uh, resistance resource so yoga is one of the grr to make ourselves to take it up and to lead a healthy lifestyle so thank you everyone for giving this, this wonderful opportunity so thank you sir thank you ma'am Thank you uh, very much, uh, Gayanidhi and Balaji, for that excellent uh, presentation, highlighting some of the practices that we use as the uh, bread and butter of the daily uh, yoga therapy protocols and uh, sessions. So for those who are not used to this, uh, we often use a certain group of practices with modifications. And they have highlighted the practices that are commonly used in our clinical setting here in the hospital. So I thank uh, Daya and Balaji for that uh, good demonstration. And uh, it is very nice that today we have had all our young uh, uh, assistant professors presenting. So for me, it's nice to have that. And again, to see that the message of salutogenesis has got imbibed well in the consciousness. So this is part of the idea of this whole webinar is not just uh, you know to share information, but that we imbibe these concepts and we start to find parallels. It's about uh, communication. So I open open the floor for some discussion. We have uh, maybe twelve or thirteen minutes we can take uh, before we have to close. So I think yes. First of all appreciate uh, both uh, Balaji and Dayanadi for that wonderful, you know, when two people are doing things, uh, you know, like how it is said, uh, too many cooks spoil the broth. But now, uh, you know, you could see the uh, exhibition of a beautiful integration, one person explaining and one person doing the practice, and they swapped over also. So well done, both of you. And uh, it was like very clear you brought in uh, all the uh, the importance of the practices that are mainly practiced used with the patients here at the school of yoga therapy and how important this concept of salutogenesis is put into practice uh, as an everyday you know like uh, when we deal with the patients everyday practice um, one small thing i would like to point out is how important it is to talk to the patients when they come in, you know, like that's what you often do, right? Uh, Balaji or Dayanadi, when a patient comes in, you sit and, you know, like uh, uh, like Janita said, you analyze the case sheet that they bring, the scientific case sheet with the diagnosis that the medical doctors have made. And what we do is like we sit and analyze that and we make a yogic diagnosis with the other tools that we have created. And... Uh, the main, the other important thing is talking to them, motivating them to continue with these practices, which definitely adds on to the compliance. And, uh, you know, overall, the trust is built up. Uh, you know, it is like building a bridge between the therapist and the person who is undergoing the therapy. The bridge is built and it becomes easier to correspond. And that, you know, it is like a, everything put together brings in the benefit. So very well done and uh, good luck. Thank you. May I speak, sir? Uh, congratulations and excellent. I feel Mudita and Maitri uh, with my colleagues who are doing so well. I am an armchair researcher, cannot do anything. And when my colleagues are doing like that, I'm feeling very happy. And the, the duo performance is almost equal to not to not to song steps performance. It's on par with that. Uh, then uh, uh, may I ask about a small question. Here, uh, this uh, the stress relief is something like uh, uh, 
uh, yoga with suggestibility the stress is gone so there the suggestibility element is there so here the suggestibility element acts very positively but here in our area there is a sector uh, following a certain uh, somewhat not so um, uh, acceptable things they keep a pyramid like cap on their head and uh, they practice certain things and they suggest in such a way that on yeah, the second day itself kundalini starts rising the are you getting any abnormal sensation somewhere in the pelvis or not yes i am getting ah yes you are the person chosen person you are uh, getting it so this type of people every month we get three or four cases of psychosis because of their uh, uh, getting hallucinations about the kundalini stacking there or somewhere are getting delusions about their past life uh, do you uh, I, i mean have you got any experience with this type of uh, eccentric behaviors uh, in our uh, field which are going to spoil unnecessarily the real uh, worth or purity of the discipline namaste sir uh, sir in the uh, limited years of experience uh, we didn't experience anything like that because wherever we do this uh, the crowd will enjoy this kind of sessions actually because i remember uh, first time when the saitar is started and uh, meena ma'am has demonstrated for the medical students and the post graduate students they started to sing a song called shake 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 and the throw so some kind of enjoyment was always there when people doing the shake and throw and it is one of the very easy practice that everyone can do even people can sit and do this practice and they can uh, throw out the tension so in our limited experience uh, we didn't find uh, any kind of those things so in the vast ocean experience uh, our director sir can uh, add something to it so sir, sir. my yeah. emphasis is I I know about our practices and I have seen many videos of Mena Madams and the sir sir. Never always all students enjoyed that one and all that. I am asking about the second aspect, that particular esoteric uh, uh, trend. Have you actually have you seen anything in our psychiatry department or there? Yes, I mean out of curiosity, I am asking because my practice is somewhat uh, getting more gain because of their. Uh, Uh, <laughs> their practices, their abnormal practices. That's oh. what, what I what. I mean. uh, what we observe was people will uh, shy to do it. Few people will be very shy to do these practices, and they won't involve or they involve partially. That's what we observe, no sir. Not uh, anything majorly actually, because I have seen a uh, few patients also and few. vips who are shy to do these kind of practices uh, that's it sir we didn't observe anything major area of uh, disturbances with this shake and throw actually uh, dr rama reddy sir's uh, question is not about the type of way we are doing yeah. what he is saying there are people who are using the suggestive power uh, and producing negative impact because of suggesting these uh, psychic energies arousal and attributing uh, factors that are leading to psychosis so in people who have a predisposition one has to be very careful of what type of suggestions you give and this is where the way we do it in a clinical setting is uh, very safe the, the first priority is do no harm so you are never going to be suggest uh, giving any suggestions that you know god is going to come alive in you and you know you are going to start flying but in many of the so called spiritual circles you find this and they find the gullible people to make money and get control over them in different cults where there are practices and then you know you start to say oh you have burning in your lower part of your spine it means kundalini is arousing and now you can see you know the, uh, the deity is appear in front of you you are blessed you know there's a lot of this we find a lot of this type of misguided uh, suggestion and those who have predisposition are thrown into psychosis so that is definitely not part of the yoga tradition and that is very much a lot of cult uh, behavior that is found around the world and especially in people who uh, are gullible 
and uh, they they find people who are innocent and they cheat them out of lot of things i think uh, we should not even recognize those things as uh, being part of yoga and they are definitely not part of yoga therapy or yoga chikitsa at all so i personally condemn such uh, activities and we have to be careful because uh, people don't know the difference and uh, you know if someone says oh you are having this because god has come down you know maybe uh, if there is a tickling in the base of your spine maybe you have worms and not kundalini that is my uh, approach to it be pragmatic don't get into this uh, uh, desire for you know something else and again uh, if you understand the culture of uh, andhra pradesh uh, with the movies that also glorify this type of evil spirit and god coming and fighting and you know there's a lot of these movies where you know there are demons and there are gods and they're coming and possessing people so you know people then get very influenced by this so just to answer the question in a short way we have not experienced that here because this type of activity first of all is not tolerated by us but from outside we haven't had too much because these cults are not here but i must say that there are certain religious cults where this type of activity is happening they don't call it yoga but there are a lot of these village religious rituals where you find this type of activity and those type of people do come but not under the guise of yoga we have bhuvana uh, wanting to say something i see thank you sir it was a good uh, demonstration i also did a bit of uh, those movements and it felt really good stretched i also like kaya kriya because that was the only exercise i was able to do i'm just telling this before i can come to the question when i was actually traveling every day from chennai to pondi kaya kriya was the only exercise i was able to do and it really took me through the day every day 10 times of just doing that coordinated activity it really took me through uh, physically and psychologically uh so thank you so much you reminded me of that but my question is um in soc of uh, saratogenic focus we know that the major first question is understanding and being uh, comprehending that i need the general resource uh, resistant resource so um i understand that yoga therapy is very useful it has helped me personally also uh but i would like to know if it actually allows the understanding of the problem so that we can actually take yoga therapy to be a part of our uh um, to get us through our issues or whatever we want to do so my question is does that actually can we understand the first question can yoga therapy help us to understand that we have an issue and we want to take it forward uh for me a personal experience again uh before i started yss uh, sir in september 2021 um i couldn't do much work at all i was very very stressed out and also had a lot of depressive symptoms so at one point i pushed myself to listen to music and i really felt better and then i got so motivated that the first thing i took was the uh, neuropsychology part of yoga and then i went on to taking yss so my from my point i felt that music worked for me that it motivated me to think that i needed to take a general resistant resource of yoga therapy to help me out now can yoga therapy by itself be a way of understanding that i have an issue and i want to continue so that is my question it's a very long explanatory question but i hope it's understandable uh, thank you bona ma'am uh, you itself said that that uh, it is useful for you so why it can be useful for others also the thing is when the person when he has that certain issues he is totally blocked up is totally going into a state of blank the dark uh actually practicing the yoga techniques or the yoga therapy or a simple relaxation a technique in yoga helps to broaden his perspective and which removes the covers that is the most important things in the yoga therapy and the, most important aspect in yoga is to attain the state of balance once a person is balanced to his practices he can able to think better and he can help to find out the solution the most important thing is we are not seeing the superficial cause we are identifying the root cause here 
what is the problem why it happened why it happened this time and what is solution so that we are not treating the symptoms we are treating the root cause the, the most important aspect is addressing the root cause and treating it and definitely all the patient we have come across they are gain the positive side effects in yoga not the side effects caused by something else so definitely it ables to do that and uh, i want diana to share few ideas on that so what you are telling is uh, right ma'am so if uh, if you are going to practice yoga for one disorder and other disorders can be cured or not okay so by doing yoga yoga has different side effects okay what effect is positive side effects okay for example if one person come here for hypertension maybe he have diabetes also okay by doing the practices it affects on them not only for single thing it also affect in multiple variations okay so by doing one practices it will affect in different levels and it helps to bring the harmony it helps to bring the equilibrium so that's the main uh, goal of yoga so as already said uh, uh, in uh, bhagavad gita so yoga helps to bring the harmony okay so what are practices you are doing in your cellular as uh, our sir is all, all, always telling so yoga has its own um way of making things in individual so it's not it while doing the same practice for different person according to the person the asana will affect okay so that's the thing if you are doing any practices the the that practices will affect accordingly and helps you for example we have one uh, um, wonderful uh, experience while sir always share in his uh, lectures always because uh, uh, sir works in uh, a site at jikmar we actually th- thought uh, one person come for hypertension and we actually thought uh, chandranadi pranayama so sir keep the, kept his uh, uh, right finger and close his uh, right nostril and do the left nostril breathing but the people actually see what sir doing and he do close his left, left nostril and do left nostril pranayama every day and after a week he comes and tell that sir it, uh, pranayama helps effectively and my i am so relaxed now so it's uh, the pranayama he is actually done is uh, surya nadi pranayama as per uh, uh, teddy uh, literary researchers we find that uh, it actually increases the pressure okay but the pra- that practice actually helps him so it's not that every practices uh, what we are doing how we are doing and Sir, we can't hear your voice. I think you are a speaker. Sorry, ma'am. Now it's okay? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So that's the thing. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you for this question. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, just to get what I understood, when you give the experience of yoga therapy, uh, that may give us the clarity of how it affects us and probably take us forward. So... Thank you, sir. It really did work for me. I just wanted a little bit more clarity. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I would like to add to uh, what uh, Bhuvana had asked. You know, the concept of cellotogenesis looks at enabling the person to better understand where they are, understand what they can change, understand why things are happening and understand there's a bigger purpose so all of this is provided in a yoga chikitsa yoga therapy protocol so it is not just the practices alone but it is what is called yogic counseling where you listen to them and a few of these concepts of dharma karma uh, the purusharthas are brought in concepts of maharishi patanjali's different attitudes like pratipaksha bhavanam i brought in when they express their life challenges you let them know that it is not only them who are suffering that many people have this issue so if others can fight it they can also fight it you strengthen those inner resources that the person have so the practices will give you the energy and the power to bring about the change but an intellectual approach is also required along with it 
So someone comes to you and they have depression, you just take them to the yoga class and say, okay, do this practice. It will have a benefit, but not as much as if you talk to them for 30 minutes, listen to them actively, give them a few ideas about life, share with them other people's stories that have dealt with similar issues. You know, all this is part of the process. And again, when you are working with them, not to just make it sound like one technique for one condition. So the, the whole process is important. And often uh, people, you know, they come for 45 minutes of, you know, a consultation. They may not even go to the yoga class after that, but they feel better. So, you know, it is not just the technique. The techniques are very powerful, but the techniques have to be put in the context. And often when you teach the technique, you should let them know why the technique is being done. You know, this is being done to help you deal with the stress better. This is done to help reduce your blood pressure better so that they know what is going on because knowledge is power in this comprehensibility of not just the problem, but comprehensibility of the therapy. Why am I doing the therapy? What will this therapy do within me? How can I facilitate the healing by my thoughts, my actions, my words? So, you know, it's, it's, it's much bigger than the technique. Because if it were only the technique, uh, I think artificial intelligence will replace us very soon. Because artificial intelligence will understand a diagnosis much, much easier if it were only about the technique. But artificial intelligence, you know, needing to find a heart is tough in artificial intelligence. You can find a head, not a heart. Thanks, sir. Sir, sir. sir just, just a small point. Um, sir has compiled it so beautifully. Um, uh, one, just one small thing. Uh, I would like to add again what sir has usually said uh, you know yoga is a journey it's an experiential journey so while doing these practices it is not just doing you experience these practices which means there is a change that is definitely happening in you like your understandability or your comprehensibility whatever it is if that's what you asked right there needs to be a change otherwise it is not yoga right so the experience matters where you bring in all these together, your body movement, your breath, you know, like we hold a mudra, whatever it is we are doing, all brought together. So integration is yoga. And while you're doing all this, all the changes that needs to happen, happens. Because you experience, you go through all these changes and definitely there is a lot of clarity and you're able to understand and comprehend what is actually happening and maybe your uh, the, when you comprehend your problem you know how to deal with it you get the solution yourself so instead of being subjective about the problem you know my problem my problem you become objective about your own thing and you're able to find a solution to your own problems and uh, that i would say like your coping skills are enhanced and, you know, salutogenesis, it's all interlinked. It is all, you know, like intertwined. We just need to find where and which part we are there now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for that uh, explanation. Actually, towards the end, I realized that all therapies actually work that way. They have a process. And unless the process is started, with understanding the client and getting them through, the techniques will not work because they would just be doing it as a routine and it won't last long. So thank you so much because I now I, it's always been there that you know all therapies are similar. And if we all understood that, I think we wouldn't have to uh, find that which is better or which isn't. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Diana, sir, and Balaji, sir. Namaste everyone. It's a wonderful section. And of course, uh, I feel like uh, both the heroes going very well under your leader, leaders, <laughs> our 
for Nupursha, of course, for the whole world actually. So um, very, very happy to see them and doing the practice and teaching them, taking very well the guitar and the traditional yoga, Rishi culture, Ashtanga yoga. Of course, uh, uh, as Amaji says always, it's like uh, the yoga, because when I joined yoga, I actually came for to learn dance, but uh, yoga, we don't really think like uh, it's apart from the life, but as, as Swamiji says, it's yoga is way of life. But even though we, we don't know what is yoga, we joined yoga class also. The Amaji says, it works inside, you know, whether you think or not, it's happening, it's happening, it works inside. So it's generally happening, it's uh, helping generally everyone, of course, with the therapy as all of them, uh, remaining it's uh, with the therapy it's really going to helping a lot and the other experience i remember when i am teaching for the insomnia patient in jipmer for the research time uh, they come to the yoga classes that we are teaching and of course people are uh, very well i mean they feel very comfortable and uh, but they don't want to go to the whole night staying there we know because they give all the connections with the wire and all they don't want to sleep in the <laughs> hospital lab the whole night for the, I mean, research thing, the part they felt uh, very hard and the uh, patient's not going there, but they're coming regularly for the yoga class, even though like uh, they're coming regularly and uh, their uh, reports are all very, very positive and uh, they feel comfortable, almost the, they feel the comfortable zone and they want to practice, even though sometime I'm not going, they're coming and practice on their own as a group. So it's happening as the just simple thing like a Swamiji's teaching is, very, very like any anyone can. Uh, I mean, I mean, benefit with that practices. Guess it's from the high, like a, from the rishis to the very, very ordinary man. For the all the categories, he made the practices very simple. So that uh, as the another experience, because the doctor told one person coming and telling, but still sometimes I'm not really feeling. Uh, I mean, comfortable, you know, when I'm sleeping. That the, as Diana uh, pointed out, like uh, some practices. It will help for the person. Maybe the other practice also been in the side way, positive benefits, side effects like that, positive way. Like that your doctor told, okay, you when I am lying down, you keep your left up and sleep and see like that. So after that, he didn't come to the class, you know. <laughs> when, I, when we saw them, why are you not coming to the classes? He said, no, I'm feeling comfortable. I'm sleeping well. To sleep well only, I came for the classes and the research, they are asking me to come and sleep in the lab, lab and all. So that I'm not comfortable. Uh, yoga, of course, it was helping. But when doctor, he met doctor and the rishis, they can just they give the, uh, with the drishti, they can give the, like, uh, with the kadaksha. We say, no, with their kadaksha, they can make them feel comfortable. They can almost cure them. And with the touch, you know, sparsha, they can give the blessings and make them to feel uh, totally a transformation. That's what he is doing, you know, when the people see him or talk with him, they feel the shanti, of course. The world of our VZ, Parjas are always used to tell. Whenever I talk with him, I feel the shanti, you know, I feel shanti like that. I'm very happy to see like uh, other person. I remember always he, whenever he meet me, he say, your husband, uh, I mean, saved my life, you know, just by telling him to chant Om Namah Shivaya. As Diana said, just to, uh, like, like Dr. Balaji said, sometimes people will feel shy even just to go, Shoo, especially the medical students. Of course, generally students and uh, especially the college students, they're very shy to uh, say, I, I used to just scold even I think last conference, sometimes I scold the people that they should feel ashamed, not feel, I mean, chanting the Om Namah Shivaya. They should be very happy and very energetic chanting Om Namah Shivaya. So there really should be that energy they should feel when they want to chant. That's what the culture actually, that's what the Swamiji's teaching culture is, Rishi culture, Ashtanga Yoga. So at, as Amaji says, it's giving the like comfortable zone for everyone actually in generally yoga. Of course, it's giving the positive side effects, whatever the practice you do, one practice, but it's helping all the way, even though they are going gender specifically this practice or that problem, that for that problem, for this practice, not even like that, generally yoga works because it's a wholesomeness, as Daksha said, so very, very happy and uh, it's helping, of course, with the therapeutic and therapy side, everyone taking the message and uh, taking the teaching and everyone benefiting. Let the, like we say, the Veda Vakya, let the message come the, come from the, all the directions as, as, as like that. Let the teaching, let the practice go for everyone and uh, 
whole universe should feel the wholesomeness. I mean, the feel comfortable, the salutogenesis. Thank you, thank you, Arundhal. Of course, I want to thank for the last church now. So I joined a little later, but the song even came like very nice, you know. Doctor, doctor, is just make you like a, feel like a small kid. You want to dance. Like a, we say the example, you know, the proverb in the Tamil, we say, even the oru paane sotruku oru soru padam. If you just check one rice, that's enough. For the whole pot, you don't have to go and check. So like that, I just, even though I joined later, it was very sweet and very nice. Of course, uh, you two are so sweet for the clients. Bona Jagata, you two are so sweet for the clients. So like that, I first started to feel like <laughs> telling you two actually very special and uh, section was very nice. And um, of course, I can always feel and uh, Dr. Bala and Shridaya always, I feel comfortable even though when I'm going with them, always I feel the comfortable and the comfortable zone and let the let the comfortable, comfortable zone. Sukasthanam, as Samaji says, let everyone feel. Take for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Devasana Miss, for those uh, kind comments and words. Uh, I have uh, shared in the chat uh, an uh, image which you can download, which is from uh, my dear Satya Kalsa. And it describes about uh, the mechanisms by which yoga practices work on multiple domains. So it's a, it's a very good one. And he is uh, doing some work on school kids where they are using, this is this is an old image, but they are modifying it. And it's uh, worth looking at it so that we realize it's not just about yoga for back pain or yoga for you know neck pain. It's much more than that. So I would like to uh, thank you all today for being with us. Um, you know, this, this webinar series comes to an end next Thursday. And uh, we have uh, the concluding session where I am uh, describing uh, the concept of uh, how we are working with uh, taking this message into medical communication. But uh, we'll be working on that communicating salutogenesis in a clinical setting. We have a copyright here called Purnam. I'll describe about that concept. And then we have the concluding session with Professor Gyal Boa, who is uh, currently in charge of the Center of uh, Salutogenesis in the University of Zurich, uh, Switzerland, who will be uh, you know, talking about salutogenesis at work and in organizations. And we'll be concluding with uh, that session next week. It's uh, been a very good webinar. A lot of uh, study materials have come together. And uh, we will be sharing these later as a compilation so that people can uh, learn about salutogenesis and holistic health. I hope to uh, put some of the materials together as an online program that people can also uh, benefit from. So we are going to make sure that message goes around. All these videos are on our ISCM YouTube channel for free downloading and free watching. So wishing you all the best. We conclude with the prayer. Um, Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Sarve Janaha Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Om Have a wonderful time wherever you are and be in touch and don't forget next week. <laughs>